As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see. Welcome to Home Group. My name is Rick Renner, and we've been waiting for you. We're coming to you right from Moscow, Russia. And when I say we, I mean me, Denise, and Paul Renner. Hey, guys. Hi, Rick. Can I welcome the Home Group? Absolutely. Home Group, welcome. We are so excited to be with you tonight. We're talking about spiritual warfare, and we're talking about the weapons that Jesus has given us. And every single one of them are so powerful. And they're especially made for you. Amen. Especially made for you and especially made for me. He, You know, I love that, Rick, that he didn't just make the shield and here's here's in, here's a one fits all or here's a helmet. It's one fits all. It was all individual. You know what else I love? The moment you were in the Roman infantry, you were issued your pieces of weaponry. And the moment we get saved and call Jesus the Lord of our life, God issues us everything we need to defeat the devil. Amen. Is that powerful? Amen. And we're in the army of the Lord. We really are in the army of the Lord, so we need to have weapons. But hey, Paul, welcome. Thank you. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you haven't tapped on the little bell, please tap on the little bell so that every time we come online, especially if it's a live event, you'll be notified. And every time we post something new, you'll also be notified so you don't miss anything because we believe in the Word of God. The Bible is God's gift to you so that we can grow together and change because He receives us just the way we are, but He also expects us to change, and in order for us to change, we must study the Bible. Amen. And every day during this particular series on spiritual warfare and spiritual weaponry, I'm mentioning the study guide called the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And the reason that I'm mentioning this is because you can't walk in spiritual weaponry without power. This stuff is heavy. It's heavy. That's right. And God gives us the power we need so we can carry it and function in it. Yes. It belongs to us. But we have to have the power to carry it, and that's why we need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's a study guide. You will love it. It will walk you into the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And when you have that, then you can function in this spiritual weaponry. Denise. Rick, when you were talking, I just had this vision of somebody that they, they have the weapons, but they don't have the power. Mm -hmm. And they're walking around like this. And they can hardly walk because the armor is so, so heavy. Well, Denise, think about it. Because on a small Roman soldier, this could weigh about 75, 80 pounds. On a bigger Roman soldier, it could weigh up to 125 pounds. All right, Paul, you're a strong man. But what if I loaded 125 pounds of metal on you and then told you to run around the block five times? I don't think I can do it. You'd have to be exceptionally strong to do that. It'd take me some time to get used to carrying that weight. Well, when we receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, it gives us the power to immediately function in this weaponry. And that's why you need to have it. But when you go to our website, to the store, and look at that study guide, look at the other ones too. For example, overcoming surprise attacks in your life, the will of God, the key to your success, what the New Testament tells us about demons. There are so many study guides. Friends, I put a lot of work into these study guides, and so do our editors. We want you to enjoy them. They will feed you. They will really feed you. And if you don't know how to study the Bible by yourself, study with us. That's what these study guides are for. They will help you study the New Testament, and you'll love it. It's so easy to understand. And I want to mention also my book called Dress to Kill, A Biblical Approach to Spiritual Warfare and Armor. I wrote this because there were a lot of unbiblical things being taught in 1991 when I wrote this. Can you believe this goes to 1991? Wow, it's still so sharp and relevant. It is a biblical approach to spiritual warfare and armor. And when you have a biblical approach, you don't have to take it anymore because you are dressed to kill. And today I'm gonna to show you a photo from this book. So I'm gonna hold on to it. But if you need prayer, please write us, prayer at renner.org, or call us right now. Our prayer team will pray for you, and we'll call you back. But are you ready? And if you are our partner, 
we want to say thank you. Amen. You. Yes. you are enabling us to preach this word all over the word of God, all over the world. And we just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And if you're not a partner, you can be by just going online. You can become a partner right there, just right now today. And by becoming a partner, you help us take the teaching of the Bible to people who are sitting at home just like you, praying that somebody would bring them answers from the Word of God. That's our task, but we can only do it in partnership with you. So please become a partner. But hey guys, you got your Bibles? Yes. Okay, today we're going to talk about the shield of faith. And hey Paul, we've got two different shields on the set. You've got a larger one, and I have a red one. Why do we have two different kinds of shields? Well, we're going to get into that today, but let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, and let's begin today in verse 14 and get moving as quick as we can to verse 16. In verse 14, Paul says, Stand therefore, having your learns, loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Then verse 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. But we saw yesterday in verse 15 that when the Bible talks about your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Paul's really talking about what kind of shoes? Killer, killer shoes. shoes. Killer shoes. What was your takeaway from yesterday about killer shoes, Paul? Well, first of all, we were talking about the peace of God. And sometimes when we talk about peace, the first thing that comes to my mind is a sweet, fuzzy feeling. Tranquility. Yeah, and, and you just think everything's so okay. I'm so peaceful. But this is not the picture that you get at all from this. No, it's a peace that enables you to advance or to hold your position when you're under attack. And you have, it's a peace that you have regardless of what's going on around you. You have enough protection that you can have peace on the inside because you have protection. And we saw that on the bottom of a Roman soldier's shoe, this is a replica that Denise and I had bought in Rome behind the Pantheon in a little shop. They had hobnails. And Denise, what were the purpose of those nails? To hold you in place. They were really like cleats. Cleats, and of course, they could crush. They could crush. But if you had these nails, now these are dull, but for the Roman soldier, they were not dull. They were really killer shoes. In fact, you could kill somebody with one kick. That's how sharp these hobnails were. But they were long, and so when you really put your foot on the ground, it would hold you in place, which means when the peace of God is operating in your life, the enemy can push, he can shove, he can try to get you to move, but the peace of God is such a keeping peace that you just maintain your position. Or I said last night, you're kind of like a palm tree in a hurricane. You ever seen a palm tree in a hurricane? The wind blows and blows and blows and blows, and you would think that it would uproot those trees. But palm trees just bend, and when the storm's finished, what do they do? They just stand right back up again. They're still in place. The peace of God does that for you. The enemy can push, he can blow, he can try to move you, but when he's gone, boom, you'll just stand right back up in your place because the peace of God is a keeping peace. It keeps you where you're supposed to be, and these nails enable you to advance. It's a keeping peace so that you can maintain your position or advance. God wants you to advance. You know, if I looked at everything that was around me in Denise, back in the early days when we moved to the Soviet Union, I would have never advanced. When we started the TV ministry, and I had to travel on planes and trains and automobiles, and there was a deficit of gas for airplanes, flying on rickety old planes that we didn't even know were safe. If I looked at everything that I saw, I would have never advanced. But you know what was an amazing thing? We were baptized in peace. I mean, I would look at those old crazy planes. My traveling associate would say, well, we need to pray that one won't fall out of the sky. I say, ah, we're going to be fine. You know what? It's a great possibility that we wouldn't have been fine. But I had such a keeping peace on me. We've dealt with thieves. We dealt with mafia in the early years. I mean, everything Paul mentions in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that he went through, I feel like I can add to the list. 
But guess what? Hey, we're sitting here and look at us. I think we're looking pretty good. We're happy. We're filled with joy. All those hurricane winds came. They left. And the peace of God enabled us to maintain our position and to keep moving forward. Amen. Amen for the peace of God. Amen. Amen. Rick, I have to read this verse. Okay, please do. Okay. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by, by prayer, prayer and supplication, supplication with, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving, let, let your requests request be made known, known unto God, God and, and the peace, peace of God. God. Peace of God. We'll do what? We'll keep. We'll, keep. Well, this says the peace of God, which surpasses Under, all understanding. understanding, will keep your hearts and minds. It's Mine a, says guard. Well, guard keeps same thing. Yeah, guard. It is a keeping peace. It's a keeping peace. Do you see what a powerful weapon peace is? It's powerful. I like what Paul said. Most people think peace is just that undefinable, fuzzy thing that you feel. People think it means that you're like on a spiritual sedative. No, not really. You're like in a bubble when you're in peace. You just can stand there. It doesn't matter how hard the enemy kicks or how many rocky places you go through or thorny places. You know what? I speak peace to you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I feel somebody right now said, boy, I need that. It's yours. It's a part of your weaponry. A keeping peace that will enable you to keep your sanity and just keep moving forward. And the peace is a person. It's Jesus. He, the Bible calls him the Prince of, of Peace. peace. And he spoke to the disciples several, several times and said, peace, yeah. I live with you. Yes. It's the same word he spoke to those disciples that he's speaking to you right now. Peace, I live with you. It's yours through Jesus. He's in you. Just take a hold of that peace. Oh, that peace of God that passes all understanding. And it's just going to do exactly what it said. It's going to guard your mind. But let's move to verse 16 to the next piece of weaponry. It says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, when you come to verse 16 and it says, Above all, if you just read that in the King of James Version, then you're going to think that it means here is the most important piece of weaponry. Isn't that what you would think? Above all. Here's the most important thing of all. And finally, above all. Yes. But that can't be right because we already saw what is the most important piece of weaponry? The loin belt. The loin belt is the most important piece. Paul began this list with the most important piece of weaponry, the loin belt of truth, which is the Bible. Then why does this verse say, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked? Well, above all in Greek is epipassin. A better translation would be out front covering all. It doesn't describe the importance of faith. It describes the position of faith. Faith is very important. In fact, can I tell you guys something? The word faith in Greek, the word pistis, usually the way that it is used in the New Testament, it's in the dative. And it describes something that's moving forward. I say that it's like a bullet that's been shot out of a gun. Bam! It's, you, cannot, you cannot pull it back. Faith is something that propels forward. Mm. Every time you see scripture, in scripture, the word faith, it describes a fast forward advancing force. Faith is never to your side. Faith is never to be used for your past. Faith is never over here, never over there. But faith is epipassin. That's what it says here in Ephesians 6, verse 16. It is out front. Here, Paul describes the position of faith. Hmm. And he calls it the shield of faith. Well, the word shield is the Greek word thurion or thurias. It is the same word for a door, which tells us the size of this shield. If you want to know what the shield of faith looked like, then just look at the door in your room, tall and wide. That was the size of a Roman shield. It was very large. Now there were multiple kinds of shields. There was another shield called aspis. The word aspis is what most people have in their minds, a round, very decorative sword, but you would never use that in a battle. That was just used in parades. You just carried it in parades. But if you went into battle, you were given a thurion, a shield that was made like a door. It was wide, it was tall, 
It covered you from top to bottom and side to side. You were completely covered. And different soldiers were different sizes. And that means every soldier needed a shield for his own dimensions. And this takes me to Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, where the Bible says God has given to every man the measure of faith. Some people say, well, you know what? I just don't have as much faith as you. My problem is you have more faith than me. I just have a deficiency in my faith. That's just not true. God's given to every man the measure of faith, which means when you were born again, God measured you from top to bottom and side to side. He gave you enough faith to make sure you are covered. Quit thinking about what somebody else has. Rejoice in what you have. You have the right measure of faith for you. You're covered from top to bottom, head to toe, side to side. You have everything you need. Your faith is enough to cover you. Amen. 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 Isn't that encouraging? I love that. But wait a minute. Let's talk about these shields. Okay, here is a really good replica of a Roman shield. Now, Paul, you have one too, and yours is bigger than mine. Now, what's the difference? Well, first of all, this is a replica, and it's too small. Roman shields were much bigger. This is the right coloring, but they were much bigger. Yours is actually a shield that dates to the Greek period. I just thought it would be fun to show two different options. But these shields, they were large. The word thurias, oblong like a door. They were fashioned out of wood, just like this. They were made out of wood. The carcass was made out of wood. On the top of the wood were attached up to eight layers of leather hide. Eight la la layers of leather hide. And it caused the front of the shield to be very soft, very pliable. The carcass of wood was very fragile. What really held it together was the layers of hide. It was attached or put together along the edge with brass or metal just like this. And it was very heavy to carry. Now, the purpose of this shield was to provide protection and to enable you to advance. However, because it was made of leather or out of hide, it could become brittle. It could become brittle. And the only way that your shield would not dry and become brittle was if you anointed it every morning. Oh, is that powerful? Can you see why the Holy Spirit chose this illustration? So when a Roman soldier woke up every morning, I have a picture of it in this book, one of the first things he would do is he would grab a vial of oil and he would begin to anoint his shield. He would take the oil and would press it into the leather, press it into the leather, saturating that leather with oil because it was a fresh application of oil every day, mm. which caused his shield to remain soft and usable and not brittle. Well, in the same way, if you're trying to function on a faith that was anointed 10 years ago, your faith is probably in trouble. Your faith needs a constant new anointing of the Holy Ghost. And the good news is Psalm 92 verse 10 says, anoint me with fresh oil. There's always a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you're trying to use an old faith, if you've not had the anointing of the Holy Spirit applied to your faith for years, probably your faith is brittle. You need a new anointing of the Holy Spirit on your faith. And I speak it to you in the name of Jesus. But a Roman soldier didn't just wake up and say, gee, I hope that I'll get fresh oil on my faith today, my shield. He reached for the bottle. He reached for a piece of material and he began to press it into his shield, which means if we want our faith to remain alive and active, we have to be intentional about submitting it to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Denise. Well, Rick, didn't his life depend on that? It, Absolutely. If it became brittle, he'd be killed. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of truth about our lives. If we don't have anointing, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, learning who he is every day, it's really possible that some of these arrows from the enemy can come in and they can, they can bring damage into our life. Okay, well, there's something else important. This shield was very important because the enemy would shoot flaming arrows. To protect yourself from flaming arrows, 
what do you think the Roman soldier would do with this shield, Paul? He'd put it above his head. Well, but before he put it above his head, what else would he do? Soak it in water. He would soak it in water. They would literally find a creek or a body of water, and they would douse their shield in the water until all those layers of hide would be saturated with water. And when it was saturated with water, it was impossible for it to catch on fire. Well, what does water represent in the Bible? The Word, the word of God. Likewise, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, word of, of God. God. If we want our faith to remain active and alive, really powerful, we have to douse our faith in the Word of God. And if you've not doused your faith in the Word of God regularly or for a long time, then you're probably not ready to charge into battle. You need to douse your faith in the Word of God and do it regularly. That's why we want you to click subscribe on our YouTube channel. We want you to get the Word of God and douse your faith in the Word of God. It puts you in a position to have a Word-saturated faith. But what I like about faith, you can see your breastplate. You can see your sword. Yeah, swords are quite beautiful. You can see your sword. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. You can see your shoes. You can feel that you're wearing a belt, and you can put stuff on your belt. But your shield, it belongs in front of you, and it's heavy, and it may be heavy, hard to carry. And you may want to drop it because it's heavy and it's hard to carry, and you may be a little bit a little tired of carrying and putting it out in front of you all the time, but you really can't see the front side of your shield. It's always the back side. Yeah, all you see is the back side. And sometimes you may not even see what you're protecting yourself against. That's very good, Paul. Mm -hmm. you, got, you just got to put it out there in front of you all the time. Well, and there's something else. When Roman soldiers were marching as troops together, very often they would lock their shields together and they would even hold them over their head. And it was called a tortoise formation. And I have a picture of it right here. I'm telling you, you need this book. This book is amazing. Here's a tortoise formation of Roman soldiers. And when they would lock their shields side by side and put them overhead, they became like an army tank. And it shows what happens when you're in a company of faith. Denise and I are in a company of faith. We love the group to whom we belong spiritually. Are you in a company of faith? Or are you surrounded by a bunch of people with brittle shields? You need to be surrounded by people that are dousing their faith regularly in the Word of God and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when you attach your faith together with others of like faith, you can really advance together. Isn't that powerful? It's wonderful. But hold on. Let's see what the rest of the verse says. Above all, now we understand it means out front, in front of all the other pieces of weaponry, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be what? Able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, what are these fiery darts? Okay, I brought one. This is a replica also from Rome, from our little shop behind the Pantheon that we bought many, many years ago. But this is not quite right. This is not quite right because this just looks like an arrow and this verse talks about what? Fiery Dark. darts. If you have a newer translation, it might even say flaming arrows. What is a flaming arrow? Well, there was a great Greek writer whose name was Thucydides. And Thucydides used this very same phrase. The Apostle Paul was educated. God likes to use educated people. And the Apostle Paul knew exactly how this word was used because it was famous in the writings of Thucydides. Fiery darts, sometimes translated flaming arrows, used by Thucydides, now used by Paul, described an arrow that just looked like an arrow. To eyesight, it just looked like an arrow, but it was a little thicker than this, and it was hollow. Paul, why was it hollow? Because it was had uh, flammable liquid on the inside. It had combustible materials on the inside. So to the natural eye, it just looked like an arrow. You didn't find out that it was a flaming arrow until impact. And when it hit, it would explode, which means this really was the earliest version of a missile or a rocket. This was really 
high technology in that day. Now, here's what you need to know. If you're not really walking in spiritual weaponry and you come under attack, you might say, ah, it's just a little arrow. Really? You may not know until it hits. And if you're not protected when it hits, you may find out this was more than just a little attack. It might have been an arrow that bears fire up on impact. It might burst into flames. And if you study what every biblical commentator says about this, it says that when flaming arrows hit, they arouse the worst the most vile human passions and reactions because suddenly you've been hit, fear, panic, all of it results. But when you have your shield in place, you are able, this verse says, to do what? Quench. Why are you able to quench it? Because your shield, your shield has been soaked in water or you have a word-soaked shield. When those flaming arrows hit faith, that is anointed and faith that is doused in the word of God, that anointing and the word of God in your faith just extinguishes it or ricochets it right back where it came from, which means you never need to be afraid of those flaming arrows if, if your shield is out front where it is supposed to be, if it is anointing, anointed and if it is doused in the word of God. But all of that is intentional. Your shield is not going to be anointed by accident. Your shield is not going to be doused in the Bible, doused in the word of God by accident. It's because you decided I'm going to do it today, every day. I'm going to keep my shield in faith so it will not become brittle and breakable. That is your responsibility. And if you'll do your part, you will have a faith that will stop all the missiles that the enemy would try to send against you. Denise? Well, I just think practically that for us to spend more time in the Word of God, you're going to have to spend less time doing something else, maybe in social media, maybe watching the news. But when we do that, church, it, it says God this is a priority mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And what that does, it anoints your faith. Yes, it does. And then it, and then it douses you with his word, with the truth, and it holds you in place. And, that, and the, the, the darts, the, those flaming arrows that come against us, the word of God that's residing in our heart and renewing our mind, it's just going to, Repel it off. Repel it off. It's powerful. Paul? I'm excited that we're talking about this because when we talk about these things, it helps us understand what the Lord has actually given us and how we are prepared to respond whenever things come our way that we perhaps didn't expect. Mm -hmm. Our shield of faith helps us deal with things that are coming from places that we didn't quite expect, but the Lord has prepared you for it. Amen. He's equipped us for every situation. You know, the Bible never says we're not going to come under attack. If that was the truth, we wouldn't need any of this weaponry. We need this weaponry because we are a threat to the domain of darkness and the devil would like to stop us. It's like Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, I said this the other day. He says, I'm appointed, remember this, mm -hmm. a preacher, a teacher, and an apostle of the Gentiles, for the which cause I suffer these things. Paul says, the devil's after me because of the call of God and the anointing of God on my life. Why? The devil was threatened by Paul. Paul says, that's why I'm going through all this trouble. I know. It's not about me. It's God's anointing on my life the devil's after. And the devil wants to stop you. But he cannot if you'll walk in the power of God and in the weapons that God provides. But we're out of time. Hey, if you need prayer, please write us, prayer at renner.org. Subscribe to our YouTube page. There's so much faithful teaching there that will douse your faith in the Word of God. And guys, tomorrow we got to wrap this up. And when we come back tomorrow, we're going to see what the Bible says about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit and the lance. we got to cover three pieces of weaponry tomorrow night. It's going to move fast, but it's going to really be good. So sleep well, 
and we'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed that teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.